Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to take a layout like this from calltoinspiration.com. I'd strongly recommend checking it out. However, we're going to be incorporating some of the designs from here in future tutorials as well. And we're going to be mimicking this structure in Squarespace, showing how we can create some more advanced layouts. And I'm going to do this in two phases. First of all, I'm going to do this as a standard section within our Squarespace site. And we're not going to be looking at these arrows here. And then secondly, I might try using the list feature in Squarespace to see how close to this effect I can get, where we can then flick through multiple images every time. Let's crack on. I've already got a page open here, so I'm going to add a new blank section. Sometimes I just like to work with a blank section to start with, and I'm going to put some placeholder Latin text for our quote. I'm not going to mimic the content directly. It's mainly to show you how we can create designs and structures in this tutorial. So I'm going to have a look here. We can see we've got a heading font. This shouldn't be a heading one unless it's our main heading for our page. So we're looking at probably heading two or three for this. And of course, we can edit the site styles in Squarespace to match this font and style. I really like the font. I like the chunky effect. Let's go for a heading two. So first of all, we can see that our heading style isn't really suitable for this style of testimonial. We'll change that in just a moment. But let's get the structure right first. So let's trim this down to roughly the same length. We're going to put some speech marks around it. And there we go. So first bit is there or thereabouts. What I'm going to do is change the background color. So we see it's on a gray there and or a light gray, silvery color. So if I go into edit section, go to colors and let's go for the light option here. Okay, getting closer to it. Now we're going to add this lozenge image above. So I'm going to go to add a section, then add the image. Coincidentally, if you're feeling I'm going a bit too fast and you're just starting out with website builders, I strongly recommend checking out our website builders channel on YouTube because we've got loads of beginner tutorials that go through every one of these tools in more detail. Now let's select a stock image that's close enough. I'm just going to search for customer and see if we can have a photo that does a similar job. I think we'll go for this one here. It's got a single person and, of course, the testimonials from one person. One thing I'm not going to be doing is using this cutout effect. However, that is something I could use either Adobe Photoshop or Canva. The background removal tools are great for getting that impact. Now we've got our photo in place. We can see it's not quite looking as we want. So we're going to go to edit, then jump to design, and we're going to get it to fill the frame. We can have a look at shapes to see if there's anything that will do the job for a lozenge. There isn't really, although you can play around with these shapes, of course, to get something that works for you. There are longer ones, so we've got an oval shape. We've got a MasterCard option and various shapes, but we're not going to worry about that. We're going to go to fill to fill the frame, and we're going to put a manual corner radius. If I was to click on this option here, we can put a radius on just one of the corners. However, we want to apply this to all four. So I click on the default option again, and let's put it to say 150, meaning that there's enough of a radius there to make it fully pill shaped and with that full bevel on each end. Okay, so let's Go back to our image design option. Let's apply an overlay on that image. And let's go for that green. So we're going to put a green tint on it. And we're going to apply one more effect. So this won't look exactly like the other examples. As I said, I'd need to use Canva for that. But let's get something close enough. So let's go back to our content. And here we can edit the photo itself. And as we can see, it's still a full color photo. So let's reduce the saturation and bump up the contrast, maybe even taking down the brightness of that photo as well. I'm going to take a moment to save that. The overlay effect in Squarespace on photos is a new feature. It used to be that we had to use plugins for that. Now we have our image and our title in place, and we're going to put in our name. Not very good with names. 
not feeling at all creative today. So let's go with that as our name and our business name. We can obviously go to centrally aligned for our text. So click on that box twice. Let's jump back in and put it centrally aligned and the same then for the author of this quote. And next up, we can look at the spacing. So I'm going to add a section above simply because we can't see where the divide is because it's filling into that top section. So I'm going to add a blank section above it just so we can see where this section for now starts and finishes. That's looking quite nice. But the pill shape is longer on this one. So let's just match that up a bit more. And our quote is a little bit longer. That's fine because we want it to be able to adjust depending on application. So if you're looking for new inspirational ways of putting quotes in on your pages, this can look really nice, something a bit different. I'll be honest, I prefer the image on this one. I think it just pops a little bit more, but there's only a limit as how much we can do within Squarespace. Once we've got that in place, we now need to jump to mobile view and just check everything's aligning on that. I did say I would change the font as well, didn't I? New feature on mobile. I've only just spotted it now. The elements, we can move up or down. And that's quite a nice feature because one of my bugbears with mobile editing in Squarespace has always been that it just takes too long. So now with all of that done, I'm going to press save. I'm going to go to this paintbrush effect and let's change our font styles. And I'm just going to change the font back, I think. There we are. We'll go for that one. I don't think the quote needs to be quite so long. Another little tweak that we could add to our design to bring it in closer to the brand is actually select the speech marks and change the color for them. Now, bear in mind, we may lose them in the backdrop. And as we can see here, they're kind of a little bit lost here on this particular layout. But if we were to go to the section and change it to the darker colors, we go for a really bold alternative approach where we could take this inner part of the text and turn it to white. So loads of options there for how we can take our quote block and style it to our heart's content. We've got blend modes as well. So if we go to darken option, we can bring the colors back in and make it more vibrant. And it really depends on what you want to do with that. Okay. Let's quickly see if we can recreate this effect using a list block. Instead of adding a blank block here, we're going to go to testimonials and see if I can find one which already has a carousel. Or in fact, we might be better off looking for a hero section. Yeah, this one here, I think we'll go for. So the one thing I don't think we'll be able to do without a bit of custom code is to change the shape of the image for this section to match that. But let's bring our quote in first. So we're going to edit the content first, go to the content block, and let's just get rid of all the one apart from the first two, because we need to see where the arrows work. And we're actually going to put the quote in for the title and then the name and role as the description. I know it's a bit backwards, but that allows us then to have the bolder title. Again, holding shift and pressing enter means that it will drop the title to the next row. So this has come together quite quickly, just showing how this can work. So let's edit this section or edit content a little bit more, should I say, and let's go to the design option. And we're going to go to inset. I'm going to go back now. I'm going to put an option to show image. So at the moment, we've got the image behind the title. Because this is currently set as a banner slideshow. OK, so just got myself a little confused there. And it's a carousel option that we want. And we want to drop it down to one column. We don't want to show adjacent slides. And we're going to apply infinite scroll, meaning that we've got the arrows to go between them. But at the moment, structurally, this is all over the place. 
We're going to go back in and let's start working on the design and layout for this option. So I'm going to go for 16 by 9 image crop. And what we're going to try and do at the end is add rounded corners at each end. I hope. So let's go to style first. And we're going to move the arrows to the bottom. Put a bit more spacing above the navigation. Go to large text size to make that quote really stand out. And as we can see, the body's been removed from this one. So we're just going to add that back in. Because we changed the design type to carousel, sometimes it just resets all of the formats. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now let's go into size and spacing. And this is where we can start really working on it to make it nearer to the other design. So we're going to go with medium content width, maybe even small. I think we'll go with small content width. Content placement to the center, that's what we want. Just a small amount of spacing between elements. The space between slides is only applicable if you show more than one on the screen. We can change the position. Again, that's only applicable in certain design layouts. And we can go to inset or full. But as we can see here, there's not really a huge difference between them. So going from this one to this one, or should I say from this to this, you can see that we're getting there slowly. The one thing you notice, I can't put any bold text on that. So I'd have to do it either via custom code or actually in the style settings to make the heading default to bold. But let's change this photo now to match the other one. As we can see, we've got our black and white photo that we can add in place. The only thing we don't have here is the option to apply the overlay effects. So we're stuck to that approach. But this in itself is a really nice testimonial slider effect in a monochrome format. And the difference is this one we can skip between them, or this one we can't. I'm going to do a quick search and we're going to need a shortcut and we're going to go straight into CSS. And I'm going to go to the property inspector. And let's use this arrow here and try and find the image. This is where I'm going to put a bit of custom code in. Hopefully, I'm going to select this option here. Normally, I would take a little bit longer and find the section that I really want to edit. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'll just see if this works. So I'm going to tag it to the image. There we go. So that was a hack. I would certainly look at finding a better class there to assign it to, because usually when you put the important tag in, that means that you're cheating and cutting corners in a lot of instances. So obviously we're going to try and do that. I want to recreate this effect, certainly for our SquareForge. If you head over to squareforge.net, you'll know what I mean. It's a online template builder that we're using to create loads of prefabricated layouts like this that you can just plug and play into your next Squarespace website. Let's just jump in here once more. And I'm not quite happy with the ratio of that image. It's quite big and bulky compared to the, the quote below it. So let's see what options we've got here. I think we can go to an ultra widescreen format. It's more of a a pill shaped. And instead of going for the media width as small, we can manually reduce that image size to something that we want. There we go. I could go in and put some custom code in to restyle these arrows to make them more akin to that format. But hopefully that's given you a good idea of how we can either create a single testimonial, which is the easier beginner to intermediate option, should I say, or well, the slightly more advanced option where we can use a list option. And it means then we can jump between multiple images. Bear in mind that we'd have better content and photos for that. 
This one's more limited in terms of how we style individual elements because this is coming in as a heading style as opposed to a text block. We can't go in and change the colors of the inverted commas. We can't uh, make the text bold without via custom code or directly through the styling options. Anyway, hope you found this helpful. If you are interested in more tutorials like this, check out our free website builders community over on school with a K. I've left the information in the description showing how you can sign up. We've also got a premium community for those who are looking to take their designs to the next level. Otherwise, I'll catch you soon. Cheers.